face of Mars, the sun god. The mark of the third eye is on the face of Mars, and it's on all the, the sun gods on Earth. How did this guy come up with that same idea in 1958? This should be proof, folks, that there's something that has not been shown that some advanced society people are privy to and never made it possible. What if I found another one like that? Then it's not a coincidence, is it? Does anybody know Arthur C. Clarke? Yeah. Who doesn't? He did a book in 1958 too. Well, sorry, maybe 1959, might have been a year apart. He decided as well, or maybe even before, I'm not even sure if the two were even friends, but he did the same thing. He was emotionally attached to the same story, not a comic, but now a science fiction book. And it is on Mars, and it's a face facing the heavens, and it's very massive, and it's showing also something above the third eye, the sun. He's even positioned it on the eastern horizon, <coughs> above the third eye position, where that little, that strange little, little, what would you call it, little small pyramid that I saw on the Mars face. What are the odds of that? Why would it be repeated by another author completely? What, what inspired these guys to do that? I mean, where do you pick up an idea for this? That's the Mars face, by the way, and here's that chunk that we've seen in the new images, a big chunk on its forehead, like it's like a little pyramid. By the way, see that piece there? It fell off there. Mm. Guess what that is? It's probably a nostril. The whole chunk of the nose yes. has fallen off to the side. And the pyramid that was there has got a huge big debris field all the way down here. It must have been a heck of an earthquake on Mars. Not surprised. The planet was destroyed by an impact that created uh, a, a crater 2,000 kilometers wide on the other side of the planet. This is the last planet. We were lived there no longer. It was an Earth-like planet too we went through yesterday. And they said there was probably two-thirds oceans on Mars that are gone. So uh, that would have been the jewel of the solar system, mainly because, number one, it's the right distance from the sun for life, as we know, on the equator, not being radiated to death and having cancer. And number two, at least half the gravity of Earth, because although it's a third of the Earth's gravity now, a huge chunk of blown away with the impact that hit the other side of the planet. And of course, there is a resemblance of an eye in there and uh, a hairline. I think it's the face, and uh, I don't care what they say about a trigger blind in shadow. You know, it's it's because the sun does that. It's because it's three-dimensional, and it does that. And they've got all different pictures now to prove it is three-dimensionally that shape. Um, how do you see the situation unfolding on this planet over the next few years? I mean, you talk about the global eliteness, oppression mm. in society. Where do you think we're headed? Yeah, um, a lot of people are hoping for really good things in 2012. There probably is a very wonderful thing just past that period. The Mayans have a calendar where they're showing their story. They remember, they just had that part of uh, the beginnings, the tip of South America, right the way up to Ohio, the whole, almost the whole of North America. Their history ended uh, on their calendar going forward in time in the year 2012. And anything after that doesn't seem to have any relevance. So we should just look at that and take it with a pinch of salt. Look at the other prophecies. and. Um, I never really took prophecy seriously until I saw in some of the things that Nostradamus, for example, wrote, and seeing what I'm doing is actually mentioned. Now, that's, that's very um, affecting in one's life to see things that you think, okay, I've got this answer to spirituality now. If I do what I'm doing, is it written? Is, is it gonna, if it works, then surely it's going to be there in prophecy. It is there in prophecy. Okay, Wayne, uh, we have watched a th wonderful three-day presentation and uh, I must say I'm, I feel very inspired with the information, so thank you for mm -hmm. imparting it. I uh, want to know a little bit about your Nostradamus connection. Okay, when I did this research and had these life-altering experiences that were on such a grand scale that I was given the secrets of human origins, the, the secrets of the spiritual origins, if this is true, has it been done before, is somebody like me going to do this? Is my quest going to be recognized. If this is what it really is, that is it shown in prophecy that somebody has this information that humanity has been robbed in the past? And I went into Nostradamus's prophecies because he is the, the prophet that has shown a massive spectrum of things that are important on the earth, the end times, people of importance, funny, strange events, interacting with different countries' leaders. And I was looking for all the spiritual aspects, and there's at least eight or even six really good ones. Uh, 
two that are not so strong, but there's at least six really good ones that refer to the tree of life being put back on the null clock of the church. And thinking of Nostradamus' time, that would be the reference to the null rock of Rome, Rome being built on the church, uh, the, the rock of Rome, mm -hmm. um, being uh, replaced with the cosmic tree. Secondly, Nostradamus mentions his secrets of the, the soul and the spirit, and when it's, it's time of departure, it's actually the time of rebirth again, and it will, it'll, be, it'll rejoice when it meets its place of origin. But then I was looking for references to, does somebody, is there any reference to somebody doing what I'm doing? There's one very powerful quotation. It speaks of, um, they will go to a place like Memphis. Now Memphis was the beginning of Egypt. That's where that star map is. That's the X that marks the spot. That was Abu Sur and a big pillar. That was like the Washington Monument that was built in ancient Egypt and it was gold capped. And that was the marking of the place of the beginnings of humanity as a star map on the ground. So with um, that star map on the ground um, and realizing that it is recognizing Memphis, it is also saying that they'll go to a place like Memphis. So it's not the real Memphis, but they being somebody in the future will go to a rebuild of Memphis. And um, the next few lines refer to uh, the, uh, the, 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 the spirit or the, um, the momentum of Hercule. Hercule. Now Hercule was Hercules, an ancient... Uh, Greece was um, important as far as um, he was another message bringer and he carried the tree of life in his right hand and he was a, a, a person that brought in goodness and tried to fight evil and they used the name Hercule and spelt it wrongly and Nostradamus spells names with one letter out usually for example Hitler, Hister, he did a silly thing like that to show okay you know it sounds different in the ether perhaps in his trance and it came through a little bit differently and he, he spelt Hercule wrong I think of the French pronunciation of my surname by the way, one of the things I've always wanted to do is rebuild pyramids, and what I would want to do is build my own star map on the ground, and it would have to be Memphis, the, the seven pyramids, and I'd build an obelisk, because that's, I can't build a human face, so I would probably build that obelisk to mark on the ground. And um, it sounds like somebody's going to build that big project, the big pyramid project, to allow people to go into it and experience the spiritual out-of-body experience that pyramids, I believe, are used for internally, and we need to have a Stargate project that needs to be built. And um, I've even thought of ways to do it cheaply, using a mind dump and letting them bring all this stuff. And I've been planning this for years and seeing those two things and the usage of the word Hercule. And then he also mentions in the quatrains that are around it, Cancerian born, um, the humility aspect is, is a very important part because you know, to be a kind of spiritual person in this field, I know for a fact that if I try and own this or try and use myself as an example, as follow me, it's toast. Everything is gone. Um, it's me bringing it forward to make it free, make it safe, and get out when everybody starts working with it. And um, I'm going to try and escape, escape it, and it carries itself forward. It as being one of them. Um, and they used the word, I'm trying to think of what the word was, um, oneness, oneism. There's, there's four things in four lines. The quatrain is made of four lines. You can see in the actual writing and the analysis of it, that's the most, most amazing quatrain where he mentions something that sounds like the name of the person. Uh, my surname is Herschel, and then a French person uh, pronouncing it will say Herschel. It even sounds a bit weird like that, and that's just one out of the, the six. Now the six are uh, five others that are really strong, and it speaks of the end times, it speaks of um, the tree of life, but also that um, it'll be more pleasing something that brings in an, a oneness of all that is more pleasing than something that the Eastern religion have been following. And I, you take Nostradamus' words, it's not mine, something that is more attractive to those that perhaps are, um, are less warlike or people that were warlike now see the importance of being uh, more peaceful. Um, but there's, there's, a, there's a lot of quatrains then that you're trying to remember them. <laughs> I would like to say just, you know, you can even show them on a graphic and, and, and look at the analysis which I'll make available and uh, see the mention of this cosmic tree coming in and replacing the basis of the, uh, the falling parts of religion. With, with all of this sort of prophecy and that, um, it is connecting in a very important thing. There's a terrible thing that's ahead of us as well. They speak of this wormwood mountain in Revelations, for example, that hits the earth at a time when it's the end times. And uh, it's a time when we're trying to be controlled by a barcode or a mark, a 666.